Hi folks, this is Jason Cacho with the Barrier News Group, and here's our first look at Halo Wars 2 for the Xbox One and PC. For the uninitiated, this is a sequel to Ensemble's real-time strategy game for the Xbox 360. What's interesting about Halo Wars was that it fulfilled the original vision of the series. Bungie first imagined Halo as an RTS in a three-dimensional environment, but that changed after the studio was picked up by Microsoft. This time around, 343 Industries and Creative Assembly are working on this game. The sequel follows the UNC ship The Spirit of Fire after it foiled the Covenant plans to commandeer a Forerunner fleet. It follows much of the same crew, though they seem to be missing a few people. At a preview event, I had a chance to check out the second mission of the single player campaign and three multiplayer modes. The first was the normal TV2, the second was a mode called Strongholds, and the third was Blitz. Let's start things off with the single player mode. It's focused on the Spirit of Fire crew trying to stop the Covenant from gaining access to the Cartographer. It's the second mission, so there's nothing really too difficult. Players roll out their squads across an unknown terrain and attack enemies. The most striking feature I noticed is the introduction of a hero unit. These are Spartans that were introduced as characters in the original. There's Spartan Alice, Spartan Douglas, and Spartan Jerome. The Covenant have their own heroes, like the Atriox Chosen. Halo War 2 doesn't change the formula much. Base building is still super structured. Players can't just build anywhere. There are pre-designated spots on the map where players can set up outposts away from their base. From the outposts, they can build one to three extensions. From what I played of the single player campaign, the objective was fairly straightforward, but they were marked oddly. I had to take over three control towers to activate an elevator. The problem was, I didn't realize what they exactly looked like until I obliterated the Covenant from the map. Now let's focus on three multiplayer modes. The first up is Normal 2v2. It was on a map called Ashes. What's interesting about this arena is the generators that are scattered around. Players are supposed to build up a small army and then capture them. It gives the team a boost in production so they can out-resource their opponent. I expect a lot of skirmishes around these sites and the expansion spots around the map. It took a while to adjust to the control scheme again. This is an RTS on a console after all. The original Halo Wars did well because the controls somehow felt good despite not being mouse and keyboard. With Halo Wars 2, 343 Industries and Creative Assembly revamped the control scheme. The D-pad can cycle through armies and bases and go to the last alert. They fiddled with the shoulder buttons, putting the right bumper as the way to select all units or local units. The right trigger lets you find pick distinct units in a group. And yes, leader powers are back. They can turn the tide of a battle. If you look at this clip, you can see how I use my healing ability and a drop down turret to turn the tide of battle. Stronghold is the next multiplayer mode, and we played on a map called Frontier. The notable thing about Stronghold is that it's straight up fighting. There isn't anything in terms of resource management, players basically have unlimited supplies and energy. The rub is that the bases and outposts start off pretty basic, and players can't exactly customize how they want to set them up. The goal of Stronghold is to hold the most outposts at the end of the match, or eliminate your enemies. Without having to think about resources, it's all about how teams use leader powers and their units. The biggest determining factor to win is efficiently destroying your enemies while healing and conserving your own army. Because resources don't matter, it's all about the time it takes to construct a unit and waiting for them to go across the map. And that can be difficult, especially when foes are breathing down your neck. Lastly, there's Blitz Mode. It's yet another way modern genres are incorporating mechanics from card games into gameplay. 
In Blitz, you don't have a base. You create units by activating a set of cards. If you want elite rangers, you'll have to summon them. If you want to use Adiox leader power, you'll have to have enough energy cores to use it. Want a Banshee? Better hope it's at the top of your deck. Initially, players start off with a small group of troops, and they can build that army by collecting energy cores that are scattered throughout the map. The goal of Blitz is to hold three spots on the map. In a way, it's a lot like Domination or Conquest in Battlefield. The first team to hit the 200 point mark wins the match. If the battle goes long, the team with the highest score as time expires gets the victory. Like other multiplayer modes, Blitz takes a high level of coordination. Players can't just sit on control points and fend off enemies. One team member has to gather energy cores so that players can use their cards. If you look at this match, my teammate and I had a game plan where I tried to distract the opponent and he would go collect the cores. We'd switch positions sometimes, but we constantly collected energy cores while the other teams just sat and fought. This proved to be their downfall. We were behind nearly the whole game, but because he ran out of energy cores, they didn't, didn't have enough energy unit to summon more troops. In the end, we rolled them. That's all folks, please subscribe. Halo Wars 2 comes out February 21st. There's actually an open beta right now, and it will last to January 30th.